Hi, I'm John Duggan. This is the Theory Station. This program is the Principles of Math program. Uh, the series is Basic Ideas, and this is, this is installment number six in the series. Uh, I've talked about a number of different things. Uh, the previous installment was about sets, and uh, now we're going to talk about functions, which are uh, almost as fundamental in math and modeling. Uh, so functions. Um, I guess the most general way to think about functions, a function is it's a relationship between the elements of one set and the elements of another. That's a pretty abstract idea, um, and it is very general and very useful. Uh, but to be concrete, let's talk about functions that um, take numbers and give us new numbers. Uh, we, are, we actually already saw examples of this when we were talking about equations. Um, so there we had one equation and two unknowns, and we solved for y in terms of x. And that was, if I can find it, it was y equals minus 3 halves x plus 6. Um, that is a relationship between x and y, and it's a function because when we put in a value of x, we get out a value of y. And as we noted, we can graph the function, the vertical intercept to 6, and then it has a slope of negative 3 halves. Uh, so, but functions can be much more general. I mean, I can draw all kinds of different functions. Um, there's a crazy one. Um, it's not a straight line. It's not linear, as we say. Um, but again, if I pick a value of x, this determines a value of y. And um, basically, I could draw any old curve there. The only, as you probably have come across, the only restriction is that I'm not allowed to draw a curve that does not give me a unique value for x. So suppose I have something like this. Um, well, then at x, it gives me this value, but it also gives me this value and it gives me this one, uh, that is not a function, at least it's not a function that gives us a number. Um, there's a more general notion called a correspondence, we won't go that way. For what we're doing now, that we would rule out, that doesn't count for us. Okay, so um, let's do an example of another function that's nonlinear, but I'll actually give the formula for it. Um, well, this is a pretty simple function. It's quadratic. So y is equal to x squared. Um, if I draw that one, um, well, as you can see, uh, for x equals 0, it's going to give us back a 0. Um, as I increase x, this function squares x, and it gets big at a increasingly fast rate. Of course, if I put in negative x's, well, you know, neg a negative, <laughs> negative one times the number squared is the same as the number squared. So we're gonna get something that's kind of symmetric looking to the vertical axis. Um, so that would be the function y equals x squared. Now, um, we can write it like this, y equals x squared, but um, there's a way of thinking about a function like it's uh, it's like a machine and you plug something into it and it gives you something out. So the notation that we use a lot is this f notation with these parentheses, okay? Um, and so what we do is we plug in values in those parentheses and the function's gonna give us a new number. So here we're talking about this quadratic function, and the formula for this would be f of x equals x squared. If we plug in an x, 
we get back out, that number squared. Okay, so um, this F kind of notation, this functional notation with the parentheses, super common, and um, that's what we'll stick with. Um, okay, so that's the idea of a function, at least of a single variable. And um, well, let's just talk a little bit about derivatives. A lot of people have had calculus, um, and so this will be old hat. Maybe this will refresh memories. I don't know. Um, so going back to the quadratic function, we have this kind of shape. And um, if I pick a particular value of x, let's say, you know, x equals 3, um, if I go up to this graph, uh, obviously the graph is curved, but I can sort of see that right at 3, I can think about there being this line leaning up against the graph that touches it but doesn't cross it. Okay, that's called a tangent line. Now, if I ask you what the slope of the graph of this function is, this black curve here, well, it doesn't have just one slope. It has a whole bunch of different slopes. But at 3, I can ask you, what's the slope of that tangent line? That's a line. So, um, so that's a well-defined question. Now, um, so calculus is, is it's more than just this, but kind of a basic idea is just how do we figure out what the slope of that tangent line is. Um, now, for this, we're actually going to be doing approximations, okay? So we have this tangent line, and um, let, me, let me blow this up. Ugh, that doesn't look good. So um, let's suppose 3 is right here. Here's our tangent line. Now, um, we don't know exactly what that is yet. But suppose, let me switch to red here. Um, Suppose I pick another point on this curve. Um, let's say that's uh, at 4. Let's ask, what's the slope of this red line here? Well, that we can actually calculate, because um, the slope of that line is the rise over run. Okay. The rise is Is this value here. Um, actually, I'll just write it down there. So the rise is what? Well, at 4, the value of the function is 4 squared. That's 16. At 3, the value of the function is 3 squared. That's 9. So the rise is 16 minus 9. That's 7. The run, well, you know, the run is just 4 minus 3, that's equal to 1. So the slope of this line is equal to 7. OK, but that's probably not a great approximation of the blue line. Um, what we can do is blow this up even more. And um, I can pick points on the curve that are closer to 3 than 4. Okay, so maybe 4 is here, but let's pick this point here instead. That's going to give us a better approximation, right? So the here's our tangent line. And now if we calculate the slope of this red line, it gets a little bit closer, right? But we can get even closer if we pick a point here. 
and look at the slope of this red line. And the idea is, if we just pick points closer and closer to three, we can keep calculating the rise over run. And then we sort of see what happens to that when we get arbitrarily close to three. Okay, so we're going to pick points closer and closer to three. So algebraically, what are we going to do? Well, so um, there's too many dashed lines here. So we're going to um, Let's say, you know, for whatever point we're looking at, that's a little bit above three. Um, and now I'm going to make that a variable. Um, I don't, I don't know how much it is above three, but it's something, and I want to think about that something getting very small. So this increment is a variable. I'm going to call it epsilon. I told you in a previous installment that Greek letters are fun, so here we're going to use a Greek letter. And, um, okay, so what is the rise over run here? Well, it's, um, in other words, what is the slope of this red line here? Well, the rise is going to be, um, well, we start off at 3 squared which is 9. Actually, let's just write it like 3 squared. Okay, at 3, the value of the function is 3 squared. At 3 plus epsilon, the value of the function is 3 plus epsilon squared. The difference is just the difference, okay? So that's the rise. And um, the run is, well, it's just that increment, so it's epsilon. So to calculate the slope of the line, we take the rise over run, which is 3 plus epsilon squared minus 3 squared over epsilon. The question is, what happens to that when the increment epsilon becomes small? Well, let's simplify this. Um, let's do it down here. So if we expand 3 plus epsilon squared, we get 3 squared plus um, 6 epsilon plus epsilon squared minus 3 squared. And um, clearly the 3 squareds are going to cancel. And so um, we get uh, 6 epsilon plus epsilon over epsilon. Oh, sorry, that's epsilon squared there. OK. We can simplify that further if we divide this epsilon. And that's going to be equal to 6 plus epsilon. All right, OK, finally, we know the slope of this red line here is equal to 6 plus epsilon. Now what happens to that slope when epsilon becomes small? Well, it just you can just see that when epsilon gets small, this quantity just gets close to 6. Okay. And we say that it goes to 6. And now by using these approximations, we figured out what the slope of that blue tangent line is, right? We couldn't calculate it directly, but we could calculate the red ones. We let that increment epsilon get small, and it turns out to be 6. So let me just do this in general. Uh, not super general, but for our quadratic function, let's just do the same thing. Um, let's now, but for any x, not just x equal to three, 
So here's our function. This is x squared. Pick any x. It could be negative as well. It doesn't matter. What we're going to do to figure out the slope of that tangent line is exactly the same thing. We're going to take um, we're going to consider some increment to x. It's epsilon. We're going to let that get small, and we're going to look at what happens to those approximation the red lines. Okay. So um, in general, the rise over run is going to be x plus epsilon squared minus epsilon, sorry, minus x squared over epsilon. Let's expand. We cancel the x squareds. Let's divide through by epsilon. And we can see that when epsilon gets small, that term just goes to zero. It vanishes. And what we end up with is uh, the expression is 2x. OK. Um, that expression is called the derivative of the function at x. Um, if we have this notation f, then um, our formula for the function is f of x equals x squared. The derivative of the function we just we just deduced was is two times x, and um, we have, there's different notation that's used for this. Um, a common one is just to put a little, it looks like an apostrophe, it's, we call it a prime symbol. F prime of x is equal to 2x. That's the Newtonian notation. We can use this Leibnizian notation or just use a big D. These all mean the same thing. This is the, the derivative, the general form of the derivative of f. And there's different notation we can use, but that's the whole idea of a derivative. It's just telling us the slope of the function, or in, you know, more precisely, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at any point. Okay. Um, this turns out to have, well, this is incredibly useful in mathematical modeling. And it's not just a technical thing. It actually has intuitive meaning in applications. Um, so it's a good thing to keep in mind. OK, I think that's enough on functions for now. And I'll see you in the next installment.